to the Deputy President to make his closing remarks. Thank you very much. I had also not been told that I would be able, I would be required to say something. Please sit down. <laughs> Let me take this opportunity to thank all those who have made presentations and those who have made interventions. And I want to say that uh, the task force that will be put in place should proceed with speed so that the issues that need to be addressed are addressed so that we can be able to have better absorption rates for our funds that have been expended in this uh, great country. Again, on the mechanism to build resilience so that we can be better prepared to deal with the negative effects of climate change and other challenges that uh, come across the way all the time. Let me encourage continuous engagement with our partners. The Ruto administration has identified continuous engagement as our modus operandi. And so far it has worked very well for us. Let me encourage even outside this forum, one-to-one -one consultation. If you have some program with a certain partner, as a ministry, please engage. And we did remove the bottlenecks that were there in terms of bureaucracy, that you have to go through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs the president guided that uh, we need to lessen bureaucracy and red tape so that we can make progress. We will continue meeting at the high level consultation forum that I co-chair with the uh, prime cabinet secretary to unlock whatever impediments that are there that may hinder uh, expeditious implementation of agreed programs. Mostly are they also the attorney general at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the National Treasury. That is where we have had challenges. At our forum, when those issues are brought to attention by the Secretariat sitting in my office, we'll be able to unlock them so that we can be able to make progress. Let me once more, on behalf of President William Ruto, the Government of the Republic of Kenya, and indeed the people of Kenya, express our gratitude to our development partners for the support that you continue to give our country and our people. Since I came to office and I was leading the exercise to make interventions when we were in deep trouble over drought and El Nino and floods, our partners have always come through for us. We don't take it for granted. We want to thank your respective governments for your friendship and for your support. And we want to continue strengthening our relationships. My office is open to all of you, heads of mission who want to come and consult with me. I'll be available at short notice. Those who may want to consult with His Excellency the President, he will be available at short notice. Because when we consult and we engage, we become better people and we achieve good results in a very seamless manner. So once more, thank you very much. You are invited to hang around or be in a hurry to leave. There is no hurry. You can stay for the rest of the day, but we don't have enough place for you to sleep. <laughs> uh, by six that day, you must leave so that you can, you can go to your homes. And uh, I want to say thank you very much. Asante Nisana, thank you. Your Excellency, sir. A kind request for you to remain up on stage as you will be joined by the DPG co-chair Parsons. May I kindly call upon His Excellency Sebastian Groth, Ambassador of Germany to Kenya, and uh, co-chair person Dr. Stephen Jackson, United Nations Resident Coordinator for this photo opportunity in commemoration of the second annual Development Partners Forum Shortly after, we're going to be joined in that first photo by the heads of corporations, Giovanni Grandi, head of office co-chairs AIC's Italy. Please, if you could be making your way together with Irene Giribaldi, head of corporation, 
European Union delegation to Kenya, please, if you could join, heads of corporations, if you could join His Excellency and the co-chairs for that photo opportunity. I will then invite the co-chairs and the heads of corporations to proceed back to their seats and ask everybody else to be upstanding as we receive the national anthem. Shortly after, ladies and gentlemen, we'll proceed right across to have our lunch. Ladies and gentlemen, you exit sir, the national anthem. And make his remarks. Kindly let us give him a, a round of applause. Thank you very much. Please be seated. <clears throat> Chief of Staff and Head of the Public Service, Felix Kosker, Cabinet Secretary is present, Principal Secretary is present, the Co-Chair of the DPA for passing down the Federal Republic of Germany, Sebastian Groth, co-chair of the DPF, the UN resident coordinator, Dr. Stephen Jackson, representatives of the COG, heads of missions and heads of cooperation, representatives of the private sector and non-state actors, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the SECO Development Partnership Forum under the Kenya Kwanzaa Administration. We are again gathered here today to deepen and strengthen our collaboration towards Kenya's development priorities. This forum is a vital platform for high-level dialogue to enhance the effectiveness of our development approach. Your presence here today demonstrates your commitment to the journey we started last year. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, since our last forum on November 22nd last year, Kenya has continued to position itself as a thought leader in calling for structuring of the global financial systems in favor of developing countries. Kenya's participation and robust engagement in the global financial conversation has been significant. As part of the determination in driving this discourse, we recently hosted the International Development Association Africa Heads of State Summit and the African Development Bank, Bank annual meetings. In such engagements, our voice underscores Kenya's proactive role in shaping global financial policies and practices, which are aimed at ensuring that our people thrive economically, socially, and politically. We remain dedicated to ensuring that our voice is heard and that we contribute meaningfully to the global financial discourse. During the first DPF, we launched the revamped Development Coordination Roadmap. This new framework has been instrumental in enhancing our engagement with the development partners, fostering better coordination, and ensuring that our collective efforts yield tangible results. One of the resolutions was to hold these high-level forums at least twice a year. Today, we gather in fulfillment of that commitment. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, since our last meeting, there have been changes and remarkable progress in our re-energized engagement framework. For instance, there has been a change in the stewardship of the DPF. His Excellency Ambassador Martin Brower concluded his tenure as the ambassador of the Kingdom of Netherlands to Kenya after four years of distinguished service. Ambassador Brewer, together with UN Resident Coordinator Dr. Stephen Jackson, played a pivotal role in strengthening this forum and advancing Kenya's development priorities. We are grateful for his dedication and leadership. I am pleased to announce that the DPF leadership mantle has been passed to His Excellency Sebastian Groth the ambassador of the Federal Republic of Germany. 
In this regard, Ambassador Growth represents our bilateral partners in this forum. Ambassador Growth, we welcome you and look forward to your leadership in this important role. Karibu sana, Balozi. In addition, we have reactivated the joint sector working groups which serve as collaborative dialogue forums on sectoral and thematic issues between the government, development partners, and non-state actors. These joint sector working groups, which are the cornerstone of our coordination framework, have been essential in addressing sector-specific challenges and fostering collaborative solutions. We continue to call on the co-chairs of these sectoral groups to ensure that our engagements remain robust, issue, and results-oriented. We want to encourage the co-chairs whose joint sector working groups have not convened to urgently do so. Further, you recall during the last DPF, we committed to constitute a high-level government policy forum to be co-chaired by myself at the Prime Cabinet Secretary, Honorable Musayam Davadi. I am delighted to report that this forum has been constituted and has been meeting. It has unlocked and given direction on several issues that have been brought to our attention. The establishment of this high-level government forum provides the assurance that issues affecting our dialogue and collaboration are given the highest possible attention within government. Additionally, in broadening participation of our players in this important dialogue, we have received a proposal to bring on board a joint sector working group for our constitutional commissions and independent offices. Through Executive Order No. 2 of 2023, which created a CCIO liaison office in my office, we endeavor to come support the work of these offices while safeguarding their independence. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is our joint understanding. During the first DPF, we committed to enhance the absorption of our externally funded projects and to work together to develop a framework to strengthen the resilience of our country. In preparation for this meeting, we have embarked on a collaborative effort to delve into the factors that moderate the impact of development assistance. Today, we have the opportunity for an open and honest dialogue on what each party needs to do better to increase absorption rates and, most importantly, demonstrate results and impact in the lives of Kenyans. We recognize that improving absorption rates requires addressing challenges on both sides in project implementation and ensuring timely disbursement and utilization of funds. In keeping with the principles of the Paris Declaration and the Accra Agenda for Action of Mutual Accountability and Managing, managing of, for Resource, I urge our development partners to support the government's efforts to consolidate information on all the support provided to Kenya, whether on or off budget. This will enhance efficient, fair allocation and distribution of resources across the various sectors. I therefore urge all stakeholders to approach this discussion with a spirit of cooperation and a shared commitment to finding a lasting solution and filing of affirmative reports back to our respective governments. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, turning our attention to Leslie's Kenya continues to face diverse shocks and stresses. They range from droughts, floods, accidents, pandemics, to economic shocks. Climate change-related shocks have been in particular severe, with the country oscillating between extreme droughts and devastating floods. Recently, we experienced a season of floods that resulted in the loss of, a 200, the loss of over 200 lives, close to 10,000 livestock displacement of nearly 60,000 households and widespread destruction of other forms of livelihoods and infrastructure. While the floods have not fully ceased, there has been some reprieve in most parts of the country. We are immensely grateful for the emergency support provided by our development partners, private sector, civil societies, and well-wishers. Many of the partners provided their material and in-kind support through UN agencies and the Kenya Red Cross. The Kenya Private Sector Alliance Foundation and numerous community and religious organizations. We also extend our heartfelt gratitude to the assistance. You will agree with me 
then that this thematic dialogue on strengthening, strengthening resilience is timely. A multi-agency team of 10 joint sector working groups coordinated by my office has been working on proposals to enhance our resilience across all sectors. Today, we'll have the opportunity to review the proposed roadmap to a well-coordinated and robust framework which will allow us to build our ability to anticipate, respond, adapt, and build back better after these shocks and stressors. We welcome information and strategies, particularly from our development partners, on how to strengthen and deepen our resilience initiatives. His Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as we embark on today's discussions, our shared goal is to improve lives of the Kenyan people. Our collaboration, coordination, and commitment are essential to achieving this goal. I'm confident that with your continued support and active participation, we can overcome the challenges we face and build a more resilient and prosperous Kenyan together. Thank you once again for your presence and dedication. I welcome you to a fruitful, honest, and cardy discussion as we work together towards our common objectives. Asante sana.